Brighter Shades of Light Written by Jacqueline Osborne Narrated by Christian J. Gilliland Let's get this over with, I said to myself and walked over to the computer, logging into my email. All five of my courses required us to print the syllabus, some of which were seven or eight pages long. After scheduling them all, I walked over to the machine, watching it prepare the paper and began to print. I loved seeing how it all worked. Something about the sound of the machine as it printed appealed to me, and I started adding other sound effects to go with it, eventually tapping my hands on the table and creating a beat. Can you not do that, please? I jumped at the voice and flipped around. A man sat at the table in the corner of the room, his back against the wall, and was eyeing me over a stack of papers. With tousled brown hair that touched the middle of his ears, light green eyes that peered at me through black-framed glasses, and a narrowed brow, he was both mysterious and fucking hot. But not an obvious kind of hot, more subtle and reserved, as if he didn't understand his own appeal. Sorry, I said once I was able to find my voice. My cheeks heated as I recalled my one-man beatboxing show. Didn't see you over there. I thought I was alone. The man nodded and went back to reading. Two textbooks were laid out on the table, and he skimmed the chapter from one before doing the same to the second and flipping the page, multitasking to the extreme. A smarter person would have taken that as a sign to shut the fuck up and go about my business. Instead, I stepped closer to him. I'm a student here. He looked up at me. I see that. Yeah, I stated the obvious, hadn't I? The printer in the main part of the lobby's broken, so they said I could come up here. The man returned his attention to his papers. Mm-hmm. Oh my god, just shut up, Cody. The printer continued to whir behind me, adding noise to the otherwise quiet room. So quiet. I'd never been good at keeping my mouth closed. It was a discipline the NROTC officers had had to drill into me from day one. So, uh, you're a teacher? I asked. He pushed his glasses up his nose and glanced up at me again. The power of his eyes made me a little wobbly on my feet. Correct. I'm Cody Miller, a uh, midshipman in the NROTC program. I stepped forward and reached to shake his hand. It was only the polite thing to do when meeting someone. At first, I didn't know if he'd accept it by the way he studied me, but he finally took my hand in his. Dr. Sebastian Vale, he said, giving my hand a firm shake before letting go. The air left my lungs and I nearly shit and fell back in it. No fucking way this is real. From what I'd heard, Dr. Vale wasn't fond of having his picture taken, so there had never been a photo of him in the articles I read. Sure, I probably could have found a picture of him if I had looked hard enough, but it hadn't mattered enough to me. Looks like I should have tried, though, to avoid this exact moment of making an ass out of myself. Realizing I was gaping at him like a fish out of water, I shook my head and cleared my throat. It's an honor to meet you, Dr. Vale. I've been a fan of your work for a while. I'm actually going to be in your class this semester, and I can't wait. Uh, yes, he said, nodding. Cody Miller. I remember your name from the roll book. Now, if you'll excuse me, I need to get back to my work. His icy demeanor managed to find its way over to me, too. The guy was standoffish and definitely not a chatty Cathy. Kind of disappointing, really. And of course, my cheeks got hot again. I grabbed the papers from the tray and tapped them on the top of the printer to line up the edges. Then I turned back around to him. Um, it was nice meeting you, Sebastian. Holy fucking shit, I did not just call him by his first name. Dr. Vale, if you please. Green eyes met my stunned gaze. He hadn't said it in a rude way, more matter of fact, formal. It's inappropriate to be on such familiar terms when we've only just met. Yeah, uh, true. Sorry. Kill me now. Enjoy the rest of your day, Dr. Dale. Day, Dr. Vale. <laughs> As fast as I could, I left the professor's lounge and strode down the hall toward the staircase. I couldn't shake away the coldness in my veins from meeting the good old doctor's icy stare. First impressions mattered a lot, and my first impression of Dr. Vale spoke wonders. He seemed like a pompous asshole who thought himself above everyone else. His reputation on campus must have given him a big head. A reputation that was well-earned, but that didn't mean he was allowed to look down on people. 
The run-in with him didn't change the fact I was still eager to be in his class, though. Big-headed or not, it was an honor to learn from him.